Romain Grosjean was involved in one of the worst F1 crashes in history this past weekend, miraculously escaping with just burns to his hands. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Two things we're gonna address in this video that are both new to this channel. One, a Formula One injury or kind of crash situation, and second, burns. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique set of sports, please consider subscribing to my channel and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis and let's get started. Grosjean is in this picture. He is still at this point trying to escape from his car after it's literally torn in half and the front part of his car has gone through the guardrail and is engulfed in flames. Certainly part of how Grosjean survived this was the prompt response of the safety and medical team here. I believe this person we can see helmeted is actually the traveling F1 doctor. That was one of the first people there to the scene to get him out of the car and assess him right away. There were some initial fears that Grosjean had a fractured rib, but after he shared this update video from the hospital, apparently the x-rays were negative, which is reassuring, and essentially he's just being treated for burns to his hands. We don't know the specifics of how bad the burns are, but let's talk about how we classify burns and kind of what basic treatment of them entails. This is a cross section of our skin and our skin has three main layers. The top outermost layer here is the epidermis, epi meaning above or outside of the layer below, which is the dermis contained down here in the middle. And then the bottom layer is our subcutaneous tissue. That's where we have our fat and then our muscle that's gonna be below that. The primary function of this outer epidermis is to protect the rest of the skin. It provides a barrier to infections. It helps to regulate water loss. And this is essentially where our, so to speak, skin cells are located. And they basically, as they mature, they start down in the lower layer and then they progress outwards until ultimately the dead skin on top sloughs off to be replaced by new skin. The layer below that is the dermis. This is where we have a lot of our connective tissue that makes up sort of the primary structure and elasticity and biomechanical properties of our skin. This is also where our sweat glands, our different hair follicles, and a lot of nerves and blood vessels run through our skin. Beneath that then we have our subcutaneous tissue, which is our fat, and then below that we're gonna have the muscle. Burns can be classified in terms of the degree of severity, but also the thickness of the skin that they involve. A first degree burn is also called a superficial burn and it's the most mild. This is like your classic sunburn. In these types of burns, all that's been affected is this outer layer, the epidermis. Everything down in the dermis is fine. There's no damage to the fat or the muscle below. First degree superficial burn. A second degree burn is also called a partial thickness burn. And this is when the damage involves all of the epidermis and then part of the dermis. So partial thickness of the dermis. Then next a third degree burn is gonna be a full thickness burn. Now we've got all of the epidermis and all of the dermis that's been damaged because of the burn. Finally, we have a fourth degree burn, which is when all of the epidermis, the dermis, and even now some of the subcutaneous tissue, like the fat, the muscle, even the bone can also be affected. And of course, this is gonna be the most severe. Another way we'll classify burn severity is the percentage of the body that it involves. The kind of classic one that we use and learn about is called the rule of nines. So we divide different regions of the body up into equivalents of 9% to give an estimate of the total surface area that's involved with a burn. It's easy to then say when someone comes in, if their arm is burned, their leg, their face, whatever, you can get a quick estimate of the overall percentage of their body that's involved. Another one is called the rule of palms, where you take somebody who has an unburned, unaffected hand, and basically the palm is 1% of their whole body, so you can use that as another estimate to figure out how much of the body is affected by the burn. According to the World Health Organization, burns that involve the hands would be considered serious burns, as well as a number of different criteria that they use with the patient's history and just the severity of the burn itself. So with Grosjean here, you know, if we go off of that criteria, these would be considered serious burns per the WHO because they involve his hands, but really don't know if they were first degree, second degree, third degree, or so on. Grosjean has his hands and fingers individually wrapped here for a number of different reasons. One, one of the biggest problems and complications with burns is the risk of infection. When you have a serious burn, if you lose any damage to your lymphatic tissue that sits here in the dermis, that affects your body's ability to clear infections and get rid of bacteria. So by providing some protective dressing, you try to limit the chances of infection. The fact though that all of his fingers are circumferentially wrapped here tells me that the burns probably did involve the majority of his hands and fingers, which makes them a little more concerning. One of the big long-term complications of burns and part of what I deal with in my PM&R specialty is that you can get contractures and tightening of the skin as that scar tissue heals as the burns recover. 
This means you can have joint contractures and limited mobility, and so that's particularly damaging if it involves the dexterity of your hands. So it's important to establish early range of motion as best as possible to try to prevent these contractures and stiffness from happening with scar tissue deposition from the healing of the burns. So by having his fingers all individually wrapped here, it allows for more free movement of his fingers individually to try to maintain range of motion as he's healing. But beyond the initial infection risks, the fluid loss you can have with burn, other kind of acute burn complications, the biggest thing for someone like a Formula One driver is gonna be that fine motor control and dexterity of his fingers. So while Grosjean survived this horrific looking injury, he's gonna really rely on his hand therapists to really help rehab him here after the acute injury starts to heal. Nonetheless, so this is a miracle that he is talking, alert, conscious, and awake here in the hospital to give us this update. Which brings me back to the crash itself and some of the tech features of the car that are really cool to focus on. I was an engineer before I became a doctor, so this stuff also particularly fascinates me. This is the Halo device that you've been hearing about in terms of what actually saved his life, and yeah, it did. This device was added to the cars because of, with these open cockpit racing platforms, you're really predisposed to something coming across and hitting you in the head and causing major injury or death. So the idea of this halo device was to basically deflect any sort of debris, foreign objects, or prevent anything from coming into direct contact with the head in a crash like what happened with Grosjean. We can see in these photos here, Grosjean's car split and went through the guardrail. If he didn't have that halo device basically deflecting the metal of the guardrail right here up and over his head, this would have completely smashed into his head. I don't think there's any question that he would be dead. These things are designed to sustain impact. And while how the guardrail itself failed is a completely other question that F1 is gonna investigate, yeah, this thing saved his life. Pretty awesome to see that this engineering feat was put into practice and has in fact made a difference to save a driver's life. So that's it for the video. Again, truly just a miraculous, crazy sort of situation that Grosjean is so fortunate to have come out of in as good a shape as he is. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something along the way. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.